Welcome to Behind the Investigation. I'm investigative reporter Sierra Cummings, joined now by investigative reporter Andy Parati. Good to have you, Andy. Thanks for having me. Such an important story that you're about to highlight. It affects us all, safety on the roads. Yeah, right. We're talking about guardrails. And guardrails, as you know, they're meant to protect you. If your vehicle hits it, it's supposed to prevent you from going on the other side, going down an embankment, mm -hmm. or hitting something on the other side. But when they're not repaired after they've been hit previously, they can't do its job. They can't protect you. Mm. And this story highlights that problem involving a young family a few years ago and how it's still a problem today. When I was a baby, she had made me a picture book. Naya Hunter shares memories of a woman who looked forward to being a mother, her mother, Catrice. I found out I was pregnant with you June 17th. And this is her second trimester. It really made me feel loved and wanted that she took the time to do all this. In 2018, the 30-year-old mother just got a job promotion. Clarissa Hunter is her aunt. You know, doing good for herself, getting ready to, you know, get our own place. Things were looking good. Things were looking great for her. And then, boom. A female involved in an accident. That car is... Ain't no way. Yeah, she can't be alive. It's unclear how the crash started, but we know how it ended. On a summer evening in 2018, Catrice's SUV went over this guardrail, slamming into a steel pole on Interstate 85 and Atlanta, killing her. Google Street View shows the same guardrail damaged and deemed non-functional by the state 10 months before the crash. The guardrail damaged for a long time. Jeb Butler and Matt Kahn represented oh, Catrice's family. It became really clear pretty quickly that this guardrail had been damaged because the evidence was right there for anyone to see. Go to Google and find it. This is how Catrice's vehicle would likely have responded if it hit a functional guardrail the day of the crash. But here's what actually happened. The damaged guardrail unable to prevent the vehicle from hitting the steel pole. When you learned that, what went through your mind? <sighs> Negligence was the first thing that came to my mind because now we know had the guardrail been up, Patrice would still be here. Martin Robbins Fence Company is the state contractor hired to repair damaged guardrails. According to documents obtained from the Georgia Department of Transportation, the state repeatedly told the company it wasn't making repairs within 21 days required by the contract, sending nearly two dozen emails and letters notifying the company it was in default. The warnings years before the crash. While GDOT, Martin Robbins, and another contractor did not accept liability, it agreed to pay $40 million to Catrice and her family as part of a lawsuit settled this past October. So one of the most egregious facts of this case to me was that from day one, all of the defendants admitted that they didn't do what they were supposed to do. With Georgia taxpayers on the hook for millions of dollars in GDOT's role in Catrice's death, you may expect guardrail repairs are now completed on time. Five years after her crash, it's still a problem. According to state repair logs uncovered by Atlanta News First, GDOT continues to not meet its 21-day repair deadline. Of the 370 defective guardrails identified in this December report produced by the agency, one-third of the repairs took longer than the required time, some more than 100 days. The state also rehired Martin Robbins in 2022, a contract worth $1.8 million. I'd love to tell you I was surprised, but I'm not. What we've seen of the industry and the way it operates is frankly not encouraging. Okay, we've got our uh, fearless leader, G. Dot. Russell McMurray is the commissioner in charge. He declined interview requests, instead sending this statement writing, any injury or fatality that occurs on Georgia roadways is devastating to all concerned. It goes on to say it continues to make significant progress in the maintenance, repair, and inventory of guardrails throughout the state. I know that she's watching down on us. A young woman without her mother and a state agency accused of not doing its job 
potentially putting Georgia drivers in danger. Catrice is dead and deceased because they dropped the ball. Man, your heart just really breaks for Catrice's family. Um, the very thing that's supposed to protect you is really failing to do that. Yeah, it's, it's a horrible situation. And Catrice's two daughters are now getting raised by her aunt. Mm -hmm. um, they mo recently moved back to Georgia. They had, after her passing, they moved to out of state and now they're back. But um, they're grappling with this and they're so concerned that it's still going on today, potentially impacting more families. Um, the contractor involved here essentially has promised to repair under certain timeline because of that contract. That's what the contract says, as you've highlighted. So what's the status? What's been the contractor's response to your investigation? So the contractor that we're talking about is Martin Robbins Fence Company. They have denied liability, even mm -hmm. though they were part of the $40 million settlement. And I got an email from the president yesterday telling me some really important context about this issue. He said... In 2011 and for a number of years, the people who were reporting damaged guardrails were really us, citizens, law enforcement, and GDOT employees. And then in 2018 or so, GDOT hired a contractor to simply drive around and find more of these. And so at the time, they didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they were fixing about 50 guardrails a day or a month, excuse wow. me. And then it jumped into the hundreds. And that's why they say they weren't able to keep up with that repair deadline of 21 days. Well, we know you'll stay on top of this. Mm -hmm. Excellent work. You can find all of our behind the investigations across our social media and streaming platforms and anywhere you get your podcasts. This has been Behind the Investigation.